The letter arrived on a Tuesday. Its crisp white envelope was stark contrast to the usual bills and junk mail that cluttered Evelyn Blackwood's mailbox. She turned it over in her hands, frowning at the unfamiliar return address. Blackwood Estate, 1887 Hollow Creek Road, Shadowvale, Oregon. Evelyn's heart quickened. She hadn't heard from anyone in her father's family for years, not since the bitter falling out that had torn the Blackwoods apart when she was just a child. Now, at 32, she had almost forgotten about that side of her family tree. With trembling fingers, she tore open the envelope and unfolded the letter inside. The paper was thick and expensive, the kind used for official documents. Her eyes skimmed over the formal language, catching phrases like deeply regret to inform you and passing of your great uncle Cornelius Blackwood. But it was the last paragraph that made her breath catch in her throat. As the last living descendant of the Blackwood line, you, Evelyn Marie Blackwood, have been named the sole heir of the Blackwood estate and all its holdings. Your presence is required at the estate no later than October 31st to claim your inheritance and settle any outstanding matters. Evelyn read the letter three times before its implications finally sink in. An inheritance? From a great uncle she'd never even met? It seemed too fantastical to be real. She glanced around her tiny apartment, at the second-hand furniture and the stack of unpaid bills on the coffee table. Her job as a freelance graphic designer barely covered her rent, let alone allowed for any luxuries. The thought of an inheritance, a financial security, was almost too much to hope for. But there was something else, too, a nagging sense of unease that she couldn't quite shake. Why now? Why her? And why did they need her to come in person? Evelyn's gaze fell on the small box of mementos she kept tucked away in her closet. Inside was the only photo she had of her father, taken just before he disappeared when she was eight years old. His eyes, so like her own, stared back at her from the faded photograph. She remembered the stories he used to tell her, fantastic tales of the Blackwood family's history of dark secrets and ancient power. At the time, she dismissed them as mere bedtime stories. But now, with this letter in her hand, she wasn't so sure. Evelyn took a deep breath and made her decision. She would go to Shadowvale. She would claim her inheritance. And maybe, just maybe, she would finally uncover the truth about her family's mysterious past. Little did she know that some secrets are better left buried, and that the Blackwood estate held horrors beyond her darkest nightmares. The drive to Shadowvale took Evelyn the better part of two days. As she left the familiar bustle of the city behind, the landscape gradually transformed. Lush forests gave way to sparser, more twisted vegetation. The roads narrowed and wound treacherously through hills that seemed to loom ever closer. By the time she reached the outskirts of Shadowvale, the sun was setting, casting long shadows across the road. The town itself was little more than a collection of weathered buildings clustered around a single main street. As Evelyn drove through, she couldn't shake the feeling that every window held watching eyes, every shadow concealed a lurking presence. She stopped at the only gas station in town, a decrepit structure that looked like it had seen better days a century ago. The attendant, an old man with roomy eyes and yellow teeth, gave her a long, unsettling stare as she asked for directions to the Blackwood estate. Blackwood, you say? He wheezed, his voice like dry leaves rustling in the wind. You'd best turn around and head back where you came from, miss. Nothing but trouble up at that old place. Evelyn frowned. I'm afraid that's not an option. I'm expected there. The old man shook his head slowly. Your funeral, he muttered then gave her directions in a voice that seemed to drip with foreboding. As Evelyn drove away, she caught sight of the man in her rearview mirror. He was still watching her, his gnarled hand raised in what might have been a wave or a warning. The road to the Blackwood estate wound up into the hills, becoming narrower and more overgrown with each passing mile. 
Evelyn's little car struggled against the incline, the engine protesting as she pushed it harder. Just as she was beginning to wonder if she'd taken a wrong turn, she rounded a bend and saw it. The Blackwood Estate loomed before her, a massive Victorian mansion that seemed to crawl at the darkening sky with its many spires and gables. It was a behemoth of weathered stone and warped wood, its windows dark and lifeless. The surrounding grounds were a tangle of overgrown gardens and gnarled trees, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. As Evelyn pulled up to the wrought iron gates, she felt a chill run down her spine. The gates creaked open of their own accord, as if welcoming her, or perhaps inviting her into a trap. She drove up the winding driveway, gravel crunching ominously beneath her tires. The front door of the mansion stood slightly ajar, a sliver of darkness beckoning her inside. Evelyn parked and stepped out of her car, the cool evening air raising goosebumps on her skin. As she approached the house, she could have sworn she heard whispers on the wind, fleeting snatches of conversation just beyond the range of comprehension. She paused at the foot of the steps leading up to the front door, her hand clutching the strap of her overnight bag. This was her last chance to turn back, to forget about the inheritance and return to her safe, predictable life. But something pushed her forward. Curiosity? Greed? Or perhaps something deeper, a pull she couldn't explain or resist. Evelyn took a deep breath and climbed the stairs. As she pushed open the heavy oak door, it let out a low, mournful groan, as if the house itself were sighing in anticipation. She stepped over the threshold and into the gloom beyond. The door swung shut behind her with a resounding thud, and Evelyn Blackwood's world changed forever. The foyer of the Blackwood estate was a cavernous space, dominated by a grand staircase that swept upward into darkness. Dust motes danced in the feeble light that filtered through grimy windows and the air was thick with the musty scent of decay and neglect. Hello? Evelyn called out, her voice echoing unnaturally in the stillness. Is anyone here? No answer came, save for the settling of the old house around her. She fumbled for a light switch, but when she flicked it, nothing happened. With a sigh, Evelyn reached into her bag and pulled out her phone, using its flashlight to illuminate her surroundings. The beam of light revealed peeling wallpaper, tarnished mirrors, and portraits of stern-faced ancestors whose eyes seemed to follow her every move. As she explored the ground floor, Evelyn couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. Every creak of a floorboard, every whisper of wind through cracks in the walls, set her nerves on edge. In the kitchen, she found an old gas lamp and some matches. The warm glow of the lamp was a welcome change from the harsh beam of her phone, casting a softer light over the neglected space. It was as she was examining a dusty shelf of canned goods that she heard it, a voice so faint she almost missed it, whispering her name. Evelyn. She whirled around, her heart pounding. Who's there? Silence. Then again, a little louder. Evelyn. Welcome home. The voice seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. It was neither male nor female, neither young nor old. It was a voice that spoke of ancient things, of secrets long buried. Show yourself, Evelyn demanded, her voice trembling despite her attempt at bravery. A chill wind extinguished the lamp, plunging her into darkness. In the split second before her eyes adjusted, Evelyn could have sworn she saw shapes moving in the shadows, formless and yet terrifyingly alive. She fumbled with shaking hands to relight the lamp. As the flame sputtered back to life, she found herself alone once more. But the feeling of being watched, of being surrounded by unseen presences, remained. Evelyn's mind raced. Was she imagining things? Had the stress of the journey, the strangeness of her surroundings, played tricks on her senses? Or was there something more sinister at work in the Blackwood estate? 
She remembered her father's stories, tales of family curses and dark magic. As a child, she loved those stories. Now, standing in the oppressive gloom of her ancestral home, they took on a far more ominous tone. A sudden crash from upstairs made her jump. It sounded like breaking glass, followed by the unmistakable sound of footsteps. Evelyn's first instinct was to run, to flee this house of whispers and shadows. But something held her back. Curiosity, stubbornness, or perhaps the growing suspicion that the answers she'd always sought about her family, about her father's disappearance, lay somewhere within these walls. Gathering her courage, she gripped the lamp tightly and made her way toward the grand staircase. As she ascended, each step groaning beneath her weight, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. Evelyn, come to us. Join us. She reached the landing, her free hand trailing along the dusty balustrade. A long hallway stretched before her, lined with closed doors. At the far end, one door stood slightly ajar, a faint light spilling out from within. Evelyn moved towards it, her footsteps muffled by the threadbare carpet. The whispers surrounded her, a cacophony of voices that seemed to press against her very soul. As she checked for the door handle, a sudden gust of wind extinguished her lamp once more. In the darkness, she felt cold fingers brush against her cheek, heard a voice right next to her ear. Welcome home, Evelyn Blackwood. We've been waiting for you. The door swung open, revealing a room bathed in an eerie, pulsating light, and as Evelyn stepped across the threshold, she knew with terrifying certainty that her life would never be the same again. The chamber Evelyn entered was unlike anything she had ever seen. Its walls were lined entirely with mirrors of varying sizes and shapes, each one reflecting the pulsating light that seemed to emanate from everywhere and nowhere at once. The effect was dizzying, creating an illusion of infinite space that made her head spin. In the center of the room stood a single object, an ornate pedestal supporting a large, leather-bound book. Its cover was adorned with intricate silver filigree that seemed to writhe and shift in the otherworldly light. Evelyn approached the pedestal cautiously, her reflection multiplied a thousandfold in the surrounding mirrors. As she drew closer, she realized that the book's cover bore a familiar symbol, the Blackwood family crest, a twisted tree with roots that resembled grasping hands. Her fingers trembled as she reached out to touch the book. The moment her skin made contact with the leather, a jolt of energy surged through her body. The whispers that had been her constant companion since entering the house suddenly crescendoed into a deafening roar. Gasping, Evelyn stumbled back, her elbow striking one of the mirrors. Instead of shattering, the glass rippled like water. To her horror, she saw that her reflection no longer mimicked her movements. It stood still, staring at her with a malevolent grin that stretched impossibly wide. What is this? Evelyn cried out, spinning around only to find that every reflection now wore the same terrible expression. The truth, a chorus of voices answered, emanating from the mirrors themselves. The truth you've always sought, Evelyn Blackwood. The room began to spin, the mirrors blurring into a kaleidoscope of images. Evelyn caught glimpses of scenes playing out in their depths. A man who looked strikingly like her father, performing arcane rituals. A woman with Evelyn's eyes screaming as shadows consumed her. Generations of Blackwoods making dark packs with entities beyond human comprehension. Stop! Evelyn shouted, closing her eyes and covering her ears. But the visions continued in her mind, relentless and horrifying. When she opened her eyes again, she found herself face to face with her own reflection, but this version of herself was different. Older, with streaks of white in her hair and eyes that held the weight of terrible knowledge. Who are you? Evelyn whispered. The reflection smiled sadly. I am you, Evelyn. 
The you that embraced our family's legacy. The you that unlocked the power sleeping in your blood. What power? What legacy? The Blackwoods have always been more than human, a reflection explained. We are the keepers of ancient magic, the guardians of gateways between worlds. But power comes at a price, and our family has paid it for generations. Evelyn shook her head, unwilling to accept what she was hearing. No, this can't be real. It's just a trick, an illusion. Her reflection reached out, its hand passing through the mirror as if it were water. Cold fingers grasped Evelyn's wrist. It's all real, Evelyn, and now you have a choice to make. Embrace your heritage and claim the power that is your birthright, or run from it and doom yourself to a half-life, always hunted, always afraid. The touch of her reflection sent waves of conflicting emotions through Evelyn. Fear and exhilaration, revulsion and desire. She could feel something awakening within her, a dormant power stirring to life. What, what do I have to do? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. The reflection's grip tightened. Open the book, Evelyn. Read the words written in blood. Let the knowledge of our ancestors flow through you. Evelyn turned back to the pedestal. The leather-bound tome now seemed to pulse with life of its own. Her hand moved of its own accord, fingers curling around the cover. As she opened the book, a wind whipped through the room, shattering the mirrors in a cascade of tinkling glass. But instead of shards, each broken piece released a torrent of shadows that swirled around Evelyn in a maelstrom of whispered secrets and forbidden knowledge. She began to read, words in a language she had never seen before somehow making perfect sense. With each syllable, she felt herself changing, power coursing through her veins like liquid fire. The room of mirrors was gone, replaced by a vast swirling void. Evelyn floated in its center, the book's pages fluttering around her like the wings of dark butterflies. She saw the truth of her family's history unfold before her, the pacts made with eldritch entities, the sacrifices offered in exchange for cosmic power, the weight of responsibility passed down through generations. And she saw her father, his face etched with sorrow and determination as he made the ultimate sacrifice to protect her from this very moment. But his efforts had been in vain. The legacy of the Blackwoods could not be denied. As the final page of the book disintegrated, Evelyn felt herself being pulled back to reality. She collapsed onto the floor of the mirror room, gasping for breath. The shattered glass around her reflected not her own image, but glimpses of other worlds, other realities that now lay open to her newfound perception. Slowly, she stood, her body thrumming with power she was only beginning to understand. The whispers were silent now, replaced by a deep, instinctual knowledge of her place in the cosmic order. Evelyn Blackwood looked at her hands, marveling at the faint glow that emanated from her skin. She was no longer just a woman. She was a gateway, a keeper of secrets, a wielder of forces beyond mortal comprehension. And her journey was only beginning.